this whole notion that I would initiate a precipitous withdrawal uh, just isn't borne out by anything that I've said. What I have repeatedly said from the start when I introduced my first piece of legislation on this issue in January of 2007 is that we should be as careful getting out as we were careless getting in. And I have always said that as Commander-in-Chief I will absolutely seek the advice and counsel of our generals and, that, uh, and, and our commanders on the field, not just our generals, but uh, our mid-level officers and, uh, and, and those who are on the ground doing the fighting. Uh, but what I have said uh, is that it's the job of the Commander-in-Chief to set strategy. And one of the differences that I've had uh, with uh, the Bush administration has been the tendency to say uh, that, well, uh, I'm just going with what General Petraeus says, uh, which, in fact, uh, was uh, oftentimes the excuse they gave before General Petraeus was in place. Every time something went wrong, well, I'm just doing what the generals tell me to do. Uh, and that's an abdication of responsibility. My job as Commander-in-Chief will be to set strategy. And I have to set strategy with respect to Iraq uh, in light of a range of other... If we only have uh, one ready, uh, uh, battle-ready uh, uh, brigade available outside of the Iraq rotation to respond to other risks, that's not good strategic planning by the Commander-in-Chief. If we've got a situation in Afghanistan where we are seeing more and more violence in the eastern portion of Afghanistan at a time when we've actually increased forces down there, we've got some of the best uh, uh, battle-tested uh, operations uh, you know, deployed there and we're still seeing increases in violence, what that tells me is uh, that we've got real problems, uh, and uh, you know I've got to make a. Uh, I'm going to have to make a series of strategic decisions if uh, I am commander in chief, uh, and Iraq is just one part of that overall uh, decision making. And I, in fact, I, w I would argue at this point, part of uh, you know uh, Gen uh, General Petraeus's job now is to think about not just Iraq, but also you know, how uh, the entire uh, uh, alignment of threats uh, in, in CENTCOMs. M my point is, I will always listen to them. What I won't do is uh, abdicate my responsibilities to make the final decisions about strategy in consultation with them about how we effectuate this, this broad-based strategy. Look, it's very hard to anticipate what it's going to be like six months from now. I mean, we saw uh, how rapidly things have changed over the last six months uh, because of not only the extraordinary work of our, of our armed forces, but also uh, the shift in uh, the attitudes of tribal leaders in places like Anbar, the Mahdi's arm, Army's decision to, uh, for now at least, stand down, uh, the uh, uh, more aggressive posture that the Maliki government took uh, yeah, going into places like Basra. So if current trends continued and we were in a position where we continued to see reductions in violence uh, and stabilization and continued to see some improvements on, uh, on the part of the Iraqi army and the Iraqi police, uh, then you know, my hope would be that we can draw down uh, in a deliberate fashion in consultation with the Iraqi government uh, at a pace that is uh, determined in consultation with General Petraeus and the other uh, commanders on the ground. Uh, and you know, it strikes me that that's something that we can uh, begin relatively soon after uh, inauguration. If, on the other hand, you've got uh, a deteriorating situation for some reason, then you know, that's going to have to be taken into account.